Welcome, grade 12s. Yes, we're ready for takeoff. The accounting lesson with our crew on board. We've got James and AB with us. And what are we doing today? In today's lesson, we're looking at reconciliations and VAT. Remember, we've done all these sections. Now it's time for revision. So now, guys, buckle up, watch the flight, because we're going to do interesting questions which are from past papers, which will definitely make, prepare you for your exams. Here goes. The first question, you'll normally find this in papers these days, is what we call an appetizer. Okay, we start, we're starting the flight by giving you an appetizer, a starter. And if you look at these questions, you find that they give you three questions here, and you are expected to answer whether they are true or false. Right, so we want you to enjoy this starter, and we're going to give you one minute to enjoy it. Go for it. Welcome back, guys. Let's see what you've done. The first question says, VET paid by business on goods purchased, that's the operative word, is called input VAT. And the answer to that is true. Why? Because the VAT that we collect on sales is called output VAT. Input VAT is what we have paid on goods that we have purchased. Remember, the business is the vendor. We are paying the VAT, and we will collect it back from the customer. So definitely, the goods that we, the, the VAT that we pay on the goods is called input VAT. Let's look at the next one. It is compulsory for all businesses to register for VAT. The answer to this one is false. Why is it false? Because. If the business does not have the minimum turnover, right, you can have a voluntary registration for that. And if you don't make a certain minimum turnover, then you do, you do not qualify to register for that. So is it compulsory for all business to register for that? The answer to that is it is false. The next one. VAT returns to SARS are submitted after every six months of trading activities, and the answer to this one here is false. Right? Obviously, look at the regulations, and you will find that you can submit your VAT returns on every second month, or depending on the needs, but definitely, if you must, it's not every six months. This is your VAT returns, which you submit every second month. Okay, done and dusted with the appetizer. Let's go on to the next question. You are provided with information relating to superstores for the VAT period ending the 29th of February for two months. Can you see? This ties in with the previous question. Okay. The standard VAT rate, obviously, is 14%. Okay. Taking into account the errors and omissions, calculate the VAT amount that is, that is either payable or receivable from SARS. Okay. And then there's a theory question there for us. The internal auditor discovered that the owner, Nelson, used the VAT collected from customers 
to pay salaries and bonuses, and therefore he could not meet the VAT the vet deadline. Right. Let's take a look at the first part of the question. You are given information, and it says that the amount due to SARS on the 1st of February amounted to 44800 Now, what are we going to do with this one here? This is what we're going to do. Obviously, there's many ways of answering a question of this nature. I'm going to use the T-account method. OK? And I'm just going to draw your attention to the fact that this is what we call a VET control account. OK? And in your VET control account, you're going to find that the debit side entitles you to record transactions where you have paid the VAT and SARS owes you the money, right? So look at it in terms of the input VAT. The credit side of this account deals with amounts that we owe to SARS. And therefore, remembering the VAT output as being the amount that we have collected and we have to pay it over to SARS. Remember, a vendor acts as an agency on behalf of SARS. OK, now, going back to our information, where do we start off? The amount due to SARS on the 1st of February amounted to 44,800. Amount due to SARS. That means that's the amount that we are owing to SARS. And therefore, we will start off by saying, 44,800 is the amount that we are owing to SARS. Notice on the credit side, indicating to us a liability. OK, now, from the information that we have here, amounts from the journals on the 29th of February, there's your sales figure, right? Including the VAT works out to 564,300. The VAT amount works out to 69,300. Obviously, the 69,300 represents the amount of VAT that we have collected. And that's the amount of VAT that we owe to SARS. So therefore, if you go into your SARS account, 69,300, obviously, if we have collected that money, we owe it to to SARS. Once again, let's just look at the transaction. In your sales amount, you're going to, if it, if it was cash sales, let's assume it was cash sales, you're going to debit bank with the full amount. You're going to credit sales with the sales amount, not the amount including VAT, with the actual sales figure. And you're going to credit the VAT control account. And therefore, you find we have this entry on the credit side, 69,300, indicating the amount that we owe to SARS. Credit purchases of stock, that represents the stock that we have bought on credit. Once again, this is the amount inclusive of VAT. Now, the VAT amount on that purchases amounted to 23,520. So immediately I tell myself, 23,520 is the amount that SARS owes us. Now notice, in your VAT control account, on the debit side, indicating that that's the amount that SARS owes to us. So keep this in front of you all the time, when you are working with your control account, the debit side indicates what SARS owes us, and the credit side indicates what we owe to SARS. Got that? Brilliant. OK, next one. So we've dealt with those two already. Let's look at the next one. Stock returned by debtors, 52,440. At this point, I just want to bring in another aspect that I want you to consider. Let's assume this figure was not given to you. And it was given to you as a question mark. 
just to make you aware of the types of calculations that you could be faced with in an exam. Here's the stock ret returned by debtors, including the VAT of 52,440. Okay, let's check. How would we calculate the VAT amount on this figure if it was not given to us? Our question is given it to us. So we're not concerned about that. What I want to show you is the calculation that you're going to put through in order to calculate the VAT amount. So watch, this is what we do. 52,440 times 100 divided by 114, okay? And that gives you an amount of 46,000 Rand. What have I calculated? I've calculated the amount excluding the VAT. Let me show you another calculation, an important calculation once again. And these VAT calculations are critical when it comes to your calculations that you have to put through. Watch the space. 52,440, right? Times 14 divided by 114, and it gives you an amount of 6,440. Watch, there's the 6,440. So now you know how to go about calculating your VAT amount when it is given to you as an unknown. Okay, so this is stock return by debtors of 6,440. Again, we go back to our question and we say, right, the 6,440, 6,440, this 6,440 represents the amount of the VAT of stock that was returned by our debtors. Now, obviously, we don't have to pay that amount to SARS. Remember, included in my figure here on the 69,300 was the total amount of the sales, but there were returns. Therefore, notice that the entry is done on the opposite side, thereby reducing the amount that we owe to SARS. I hope that's clear to you. Okay. Going back to my question, bear debts written off, 59,900. The question that you need to ask yourself, are you going to owe SARS more money or are you going to owe them less? Now, obviously, if you have bad debts written off, that means those specific debtors did not pay us. And if they did not pay us, it means, therefore, that we do not have to pay SARS the full amount that we originally calculated on our sales figure. There it goes. Can you see that? This means that we now have to make an entry with the 4,900. And the question that you have to ask yourself is, what will this do to the amount that is due to SARS? Okay, let's just verify the amount once again. The amount was 4,900. Therefore, 4,900, watch what I'm doing. Again, on the debit side, why am I making the entry on the debit side? Because initially when the sales took place, let me take you back. Initially when I recorded the VAT that I had to pay to SARS based on my sales figure, right, was the 69,300. You recall? So there's the 69,300. But based on that figure, I'm not going to be receiving all that money because there's a component that we had written off as irrecoverable. So therefore, that amount is not due to SARS. And in accounting, when we want to subtract, we make the entry on the opposite side. Now, definitely grade 12s, there's different methods in which you can use to calculate the amount of VAT that you have to pay to SARS. The choice is yours, as long as you understand what you are doing, okay? So what we have done so far is we've done all the calculations pertaining to the information that is given to us. So all of this has now been recorded. Okay, the next step based on this question would be errors and omissions were noted. 
right? So we have to take each of these errors and ask ourselves, how are we going to record it? Stock was taken by the owner, the cost price of 6,000 Rand, excluding that has not been recorded. So immediately we say, fine, take out your calculator, take the amount of 6,000 Rand times your 14%, and that'll be 840 Rand. Okay, now you ask yourself, what's my double entry? A debit the drawings, okay, because it's what the owner took, a credit to trading stock, and a credit to my VAT output, 840 Rand. Let's record the 840 Rand. Watch, that's the amount that I'm owing to SARS, an amount of 840 Rand. So this proves that even the owner is subjected to VAT. Although he's the owner of the business, he or she also has to pay VAT. Guys, end of the segment. Let's take a quick break, uh, a drinks break, whatever we want to call it, and see you in a while. Welcome back, Grade 12s. Remember, we're busy sorting out the VAT, that is, that is, we have to owe to SARS or what they owe to us. We're busy with the errors and the omissions. Now we come to a question that says here, your VAT on sales was recorded incorrectly. Certain goods with a selling price of 50,000 Rand, excluding VAT, should have been recorded as zero rated items. Uh -huh. what, are we, what are they talking about? What do they mean by zero rated items? Remember, on your theory of VAT, you dealt with items that were zero rated. Can you think of a few? Certainly, brown bread, right? Certain basic foodstuffs are items that are zero rated. You also get items that are VAT exempt. Those items will never ever have VAT attached to them. School fees, transport, etc., etc. Read it up, make sure you understand the theory. Okay, now we're saying that VAT on sales was recorded incorrectly. There were goods with a selling price of 50,000 Rand. And they were recorded as normal sales. So obviously, you know that when an item is zero rated, what does it mean? It means that your VAT is at zero percent. That's right. And obviously, you know zero percent means your answer is going to be zero. There's no VAT you have to record. But we have made an error. So we're going to correct this error by taking the amount of VAT, which was, of the sales, which was 50,000. Because it was exclusive, we're going to take the 14 percent and will give us a figure of 7,000 Rand. Now, what do we do with the 7,000 Rand? With the 7,000 Rand, going back into my account, notice that the 7,000 Rand, because I had calculated the VAT incorrectly, which was part of this 69,300, you recall, I do not owe SARS 69,300, I owe them 69,300 less the 7,000 Rand, which was zero rated items, and I did not have to pay VAT on those items, because I didn't collect VAT. Remember, on zero rated items that we sell, we do not collect any VAT on those items. Okay, next one. VAT on discounts granted to debtors was not recorded. The total discounts, discount allowed amounted to 19,152. You have one minute to calculate the correct amount for me. Go for it.
Welcome back, guys. How do we do this calculation? Let's check it out. The 19,152, 19,152 times 14, divide, times 14, divided by 114 will give you a figure of 2352. Now, once again, look at my calculation. Why am I using 14 over 114? I need to calculate my VAT amount. My VAT amount, we know the standard rate, is 14%. Why do I use 114 as my denominator? Because that's the price that includes the VAT. And that's an important calculation. So my figure is 2352. Let's slot in that figure of 2352. Once again, taking into consideration what am I doing to my VAT control account? I'm debiting it because my debtors were allowed a discount. Because they were allowed a discount, that portion, I'm not going to receive the VAT on it, and therefore, I do not have to pay that amount over to SARS. Okay, therefore, let's take our amounts now. So we've got 44,800 plus... 69,300 plus 840, and that gives me an amount of 114,940. Okay, let's take the debit side of the account 23,520 plus 6,440 plus 4,900 plus. 7,000, 7,000 plus 2352, and this is equals to 44212. 44212. Let's look at these two items. The 114940 represents the amount that we owe to SARS. Credit side, liability. The 44212 represents the amount that SARS owes us. So obviously, we're going to take 114940 minus 44212, and my answer is 70728. And this now shows you that you are owing SARS an amount of 70,728. Okie dokie. If you understand this question, it deals with all calculations, and you will see with VAT, it's the 14, it's the 100, it's the 114. Make sure you know how to do your calculations. Right, next question. As an internal auditor, you discovered that the owner, Nelson, used the VAT collected from customers to pay salaries and bonuses. Therefore, he could not meet the VAT deadline. What comment would you offer to Nelson concerning this practice? State one point. Go for it, guys. You have one minute. Welcome, guys. 
Look at your responses. Firstly, it's important that Nelson must keep an accurate record of that. In other words, this means that you have to ensure that you must make a timely submission to SARS for the following reasons. One, it is illegal or unethical business practice, fraud, not you, 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 in order, the, 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 let, let's put it simply. Let's put it in layman's terms. The money that you have collected from your customers, you are on a bound to pay that money over to SARS. Remember, the business is an agent of SARS. You are collecting, like I alluded to early on, you are collecting the money on behalf of SARS. So therefore, whatever you collect for VAT must be used specifically to make the payment to SARS. If you do not comply with your payments, timelessly, the business will be liable for penalties and fines. So for the owner to use that money on something else is tantamount to fraud. And definitely, we don't want to go that, down that route, do we? So please, keep this in mind when you're answering a question of this nature. Again, look at the type of question and what are your responses. Please make sure that you answer in bullet formation. We've given you more than one answer. The question only asks you for one response, but be precise and clear in your response. Okay, that does it for the VAT question. We now move over to the, the second part of the question, or the third part of the question, rather, where we're dealing with the creditor's reconciliation statement. Now, before I continue with this creditor's recon, just once again to refresh your memories, we have two types of creditor's reconciliations that we could be examined on. The first one is an internal recon whereby we are reconciling the creditor's control account with our creditor's ledger. Uh-huh. Ring a bell? We've done that before, haven't we? And the second one is where you are reconciling a creditor's ledger account with the statement that you are receiving from your creditor. Let me repeat that. The second one is where you are reconciling your creditor's ledger account as it appears in our ledger with what? With the statement that we are receiving from the creditor. Now ask yourself the question, which one are we preparing here? It says here, use the table provided to indicate the changes that must be made. In the creditor's ledger account in the books of Thunder stores, right? And we are drawing up a creditor's reconciliation statement. So clearly you can see here, what are we doing? We are reconciling with the creditor's account. Watch here. As it appears, there's a, we, we are Thunder Stores. Our creditor is Minty Suppliers, right? So there's their account as it appears in our ledger, right? And there's the statement that we are receiving from Minty suppliers. Okay, so immediately you can see that you are reconciling the creditor's ledger account as it appears in our books with what? With the statement that we are receiving from Minty suppliers. Clear? So you are focused now in terms of what are we preparing. Okay, this is the answer book that we are given. Okay, these are the, the information that we are given with regards to the errors and omissions. Let's look at the, take a look at the answer book and see how and what is expected of us. So, there's the balance that appears in my creditor's ledger. 
110,170. And the creditor's reconciliation statement is starting with an amount of 111,600. We are reconciling the creditor's ledger with the statement that we are receiving from the creditor. This is the external creditor's recon. Okay, let's take a look at the first difference that we have. On investigation, it revealed the following errors and omissions. One, invoice number 996. Let's just do that again. Invoice number 996 was for goods that Tanda stores bought from another supplier, namely Mondi suppliers. Let's look at the information. There you can see an amount of 11,100, invoice number 996, was not purchased from Minty, but it was purchased from Mondi. So clearly, this doesn't belong in this account. And therefore, we have to do, we have to, the question that you need to answer is where must the correction be done? Does the correction affect the creditor statement or is the error in our books? Clearly you can see the error is in our books because there's the ledger account appearing in our books and we now have to correct that. Okay, therefore, we will go into our table and 11,100 was the amount. Let's just verify that amount. 11,100. Clearly you can see that what are we gonna do? We have to subtract this amount in our records because that's not the amount to, due to minty suppliers, rather to a, another supplier. Okay, guys, the end of another slot. But hang in there. I'm sure you want to know more. Take a quick break, and we'll see you just now. Welcome back, grade 12s. Yes, that, one, that error we sorted out. Let's look at the next one. The next one says... So this one we sorted out, right? Now we look at B, it says, invoice 560 was recorded correctly on the statement of account. Now, let's look at the statement of account. What does it say? Let's find our statement of account. Here goes. Invoice number 560 says 49,200. The statement is correct. Right, we know that. The statement is correct. Let's compare that with invoice like we have recorded. Invoice number 560. Let's find it. Aha, look at the amount, 44,200. Clearly you can see a difference between 49,200, which is correct. We only recorded 44,200, therefore, Let's take the figure, 49,200 minus the amount we have here, which is 44,200, 44,200. So we can see there's an amount of 5,000 Rand that we have entered too little. So therefore, when we're correcting it, what are we going to say? Let's make the adjustment of 5,000 Rand. We have to add the 5,000 Rand to our amount because obviously our amount was incorrect. Okay, next one. So we sorted that one. Invoice number 571 was an error on the statement. This was for goods supplied to another business. Right, again, ask yourself the all-important question. Who has made the mistake? 
invoice number 571 was an error on the statement. Our books are correct. It's a statement that's incorrect. This was for goods supplied to another business. Okay, let's, let's find it first. Number 571. In the statement, 571, 28,800. Error where? On the statement, guys. Statement. Can you see that? So now, our books are correct. This is incorrect. It must now be removed. Obviously, when you are working with the error, you're correcting the statement now. So go to your statement. Minus 28,000. 800, because that error, that's the, that was not for, for our business, it was for another business. Okay, next one. The discount allowed on the 7th of February 2016 is correct as per the statement of account. Again, ask yourself the question, where's the error? Let's see. The discount allowed on the 7th of February 2016 is correct as per statement of account. Let's go and see what do we have in the statement of account. Okay. There's a discount on the 7th of February. The discount allowed was 1650. Okay. So that is correct. This one is correct. Let's take that same comparison with our records. Go to our records, 7th of February, discount received 3,300. Clearly you can see, we have taken off a discount of 3,300, whereas we were only supposed to take off a discount of 1,650. So, 3,300 minus 1,650 will give you an amount of 1650. We took off 1650 too much. How do we correct it? How do we correct it? We will do this here. One six five zero. Let's find our answer sheet. Okay, watch, add it back. How much? 1650. Watch what we are doing, grade 12s, and that is important. The moment we identify an error in our books, it's recorded and corrected in the creditor's ledger. That's where we correct it. The moment there's an error in the recon or with the statement, we correct it in the creditor's statement figure. Right, next error. Tanda stores omitted to deduct the trade discount allowed on invoice number 590. Right? Let's go there. And on invoice number 590, you'll see there's an amount of 24,000 there. Right? And on invoice number 590, there's an amount of 21,600. So, 21,600, I'm just going to write it here for you. So, they showed an amount of 21,600. Ours showed an invoice of uh, the, an amount of 24,000. Clearly, there's a discrepancy. You have one minute to sort out the error. Go for it.
Okay, guys, clearly you can see the error is in our records. We've, we haven't recorded the discount. So clearly the difference between those two amounts is what we're gonna be dealing with first. So let's find that amount. It's your 24,000 minus your 21,600 to give you a figure of 2,400. Right, what do we do with the 2,400? We're going to say in our records, we have to change that figure and minus the 2,400, which we did not take into consideration. Right. Next one. Goods for 2,700 were returned by Thunder stores to Minty suppliers on the 4th of February. Okay, let's check this out. Let's get there. Right. We return goods to the value of year on the 4th of February, 2,700, right? We return the goods, we owe them less. Let's see what they did. Watch. They entered the credit note, but what did they do? They increased our account by 2,700. Clearly, the error is on the statement. And watch this one because of, it is, because of its importance. If I merely take plus 2,700, what am I doing? Remember, let's just let's do this, do, do this again so we have a clear indication of what we're talking about. You can clearly see that goods were returned by us, okay? Instead of decreasing our account, you've seen that they increased our account by 2,700. If we want to correct this error, and if we merely do this, minus 2,700, all that we are doing is we are only cancelling out the original error. So in order to correct this, we have to subtract minus 2,700 times 2, which gives you a figure of 5,400. I hope this is very clear to you, that by you processing just the 2,700, you're merely cancelling the error, so actually you have to reduce the amount by two for it to have the desired effect of a decrease in our account of 2,700. Okay, next one. In terms of the contract, Minty Suppliers charges a de delivery fee to all its customers. Let's see, what are they charging us? Okay, they charged us a delivery charge of 3,300. Did we record it? Notice no record of the 3,300. Therefore, what are we gonna do? We're gonna have to make the necessary adjustment and add to our account an amount of plus 3,300. Okay. Lastly, we are told, in terms of our recon, that, so we've dealt with all those transactions, the statement of account only includes transactions up to the 25th of February 2016, meaning, therefore, that, notice, only up to the 25th, there's the entry, all the entries after the 25th, we have to take into consideration. So here's an amount of 13,800 plus 1,380, which we have paid our supplier, right? So immediately we will correct it by doing the following. This is what we're gonna do. 
right? We've got the 13,800 and the 1,380. We're going to subtract it from that amount because we don't owe it to them anymore. Okay? And then... We've sorted that one out, the 13,800 plus the 1,380. That's now recorded. And then, obviously, there was a purchase of goods to the value of 44,400. So we go back here and we say 44,100 plus 44,100. And what we have now done is we have updated the creditors reconciliation statement with our creditor's ledger. Obviously, when you add and subtract, then definitely you will find that these two amounts will now be in balance. In other words, we've reconciled the creditor's ledger as it appears in our records with the creditor's statement that we are receiving from our creditor. Well, guys... The flight has landed. Another accounting flight has landed. From me, the captain, Ashraf Patel, and my crew, James and Amy, we wish you a pleasant stay, preparing your accounting. But remember it always, like we always say, guys, reach for the moon. A chance, if you don't get there, you definitely will be an accounting shining star. Until the next time, be good. Bye-bye. Siya Bangena. Wars and Matrix is back and better than ever. With catch-up lessons, revision and learning support on more platforms than ever before. They are great support materials on the DBE Cloud. Find us on television and revise 10 subjects. And if you miss something, relax and do Go to our YouTube channel or DSTV Catch-Up. Need help? Check out Vele our Telegram-based chat platform where teachers are waiting to help you. Prefer WhatsApp? Send questions or voice notes to our Wasa Matrix WhatsApp line. And that's not all. Want to test yourself? Check out the Matrix Live app. Hey, Matrix 2021, we've got you covered. Confused where to go? Visit the Wasa Matrix website at wasamatrix.co.za. Wasa Matrix. Hey, South Africa. September means it's time for Sia Villa's annual 1 million meds competition where you can practice math and science questions online with great prices for both learners and teachers. It's a chance for you to learn and win. To enter, sign up at siavula.com and opt in to 1 million math. Good results in math and science can open the door to a brighter future. So sign up to Siavula today and join the competition.